What's going on, Sergio? What happens, Mark? Good, man. How you doing? Good, man. Another day, another dollar. All right. How you doing, Brian? See you, Brian? Good, man. How you feeling today? Oh, man. Uh, I'm feeling light. I'm feeling light. <laughs> it's hot outside. <laughs> All right, what's going on, Mr. Duro? Yeah, what's good, guys? Right. Ryan's back at home. Ryan's back at Looking home. Good, out there. good out there. Yes, sir. Getting oh, fiber right, installed right, today. Right. Uh, you say what? Getting fiber optics in the woods, man. <laughs> and I'm going to be a uh, super internet now. One sec. One sec. Super high speed. All right. See, so, um, we're just getting the guys for a minute. It's 601. We will get started in a couple of minutes. Um, while we're waiting, make sure everybody is, uh, make sure this is streaming live. What's up, Nick? What's up? What's up? All right. How you doing out there in Alabama? Good. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick been sharing. We, we've been we've been discussing tools back and forth, just like old times. Coming up yep. with a, a lot of new tools that's been passed through the Discord. We'll, we'll take a stop and look at those. We used to use a funding rate, and um, you know, there's a new site that came out or uh, that that we looked at that had more than funding rate. So we want to go over that layer two. All right, just getting my notes ready. Like you got a fresh cut, Jamar. Uh, bro, hey, I'm consistent, man. Every Wednesday. Looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. This call, I even took a shower for. I was, I was ready. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, Monday and Wednesday, you know, we have push and pull days. I don't know if guys take the mastermind call, but uh, the mindset calls, but you know, there's certain days that. You know, you, you get focused in and you zero in and sometimes take showers late. Some of you guys, uh, and then some days you, you, you self-care. So both of those are balanced. All right. So I think we got enough to kind of get started. Um, you know, of course, uh, you know, I was expecting the market to, uh, in crypto, I was expecting the market to kind of, you know, take a breather. You know, it's not... You know, in crypto, in a, in a mass market report, we go over the, the GANs and, you know, in trading, you know, you don't get a run for, for two weeks, three weeks straight. I mean, even in a, a bullish market, you're going to have some times where the market goes up and down. And, you know, the first sign of, of bearishness, um, you know, guys start panicking like the bull market or the uh, bearish, the bearish market is taking over. And so if we just look at uh, Bitcoin, um, you know, we had a, a kind of a, a line here at 25,000 and we're at the bottom of the zone here at 23. So, you know, for me, it is, you know, it is just a normal um, uh, a period. And in the month of October, you know, we anticipated we would have some, some bullish, I mean, some bearish activity mid-month for crypto market. And you'll see here it says, uh, you know, bullish for the stock market, crypto market is normal. And what we mean by crypto market is normal is that, you know, a normal market moves up and down, right? And and even with the Fed meeting being today, we didn't anticipate the Fed meeting uh, or the meeting, meeting minutes having that big of an impact on the, on the market. Now things like bed, bed and bath, um, and and bed, bath and beyond, you know, those are retail stores. You know, retail in, in general uh, is changing. You know, it's changing. A lot of things are going on online. Uh, we have, you know, the IRS. You know, with the eighty billion dollar plan. Um, you know, even that. You know, I, I talk about the IRS a lot, but I don't want to cause unnecessary fear. You know, they're rolling out that 80 billion or 75 billion over a period of four or five years. And, you know, you have people retiring and you also have, um, you know, a, a new workforce, right? Coming in and, and, and new technology. 
um, you know, they backlogged on, on cases and, and now they have a whole new entire crypto departments. Uh, there's a real big event going on at the end of the month about, um, you know, IRS and investigators and uh, chain analysis. And, you know, most departments only have like one person doing crypto crimes inside the, uh, you know, inside local departments and, and local areas. And also put our a, a image that showed all the big companies getting into crypto. Uh, and they've already, you know, they've invested a lot. I think it was in the, uh, uh, inside the, these companies silently in crypto. And you'll see some of the biggest companies uh, coming into crypto. So in August, this month is, is normal. In mid month, you know, we, we would start seeing weakness. I told guys if, if uh, the, the stock market was up, Right now, you want to take a, a short going into next week. Uh, I do think the uh, the S&P, you know, will also have some slowdown. And then in, in crypto, the end of the month for August is normally strong. It runs into September. And, you know, about the, the first week of September, you'll start seeing crypto die down, uh, you know, take, take bigger drops. And that's just money flow, you know, getting ready for the fourth quarter. So... Um, you know, I, I anticipate, you know, crypto being inside his range, uh, and Bitcoin, I'm not, you know, uh, you know, historically, uh, we've seen how, uh, Bitcoin has moved. Uh, we've also seen if you look back, uh, and go back to, to years prior, you know, you zoom out, all right, go out to like five days. Um, you know, this zone is, is down. Uh, but we still looking at 28,000, you know, to me before, you know, we have a, a, a bigger, you know, this is still just a test, right? And let's see, um, you look at last year, uh, August 20, um, in September of 2020, two years ago, and then you come look at, you know, um, here in August, in the August, September, you know, Bitcoin is historically you know, has some buying pressure and it looks similar here at 18, you know, dies down in August and, you know, you'll have a, a dip in to September and then you'll have a rise. Same thing. So if you zoom out and look at the weekly chart, you know, even though we're, we're trending down, we're in the channel, um, you know, I'm not ready to, you know, say that, Hey, uh, this market is, is abnormal. <laughs> you know, we just have a lot of volatility. Uh, inside the S and P, uh, if you look at it, say it's, it's the only game in town. That's that's still the concept with inflation, uh, with with jobs, and so when you're looking at the economics, you know a lot of us use trading view, right? There's uh, we had these charts here. And when you come over here and you look at the economy, and you can actually you know take this out, and you start looking at S and P. You can look at uh, the consumer price index. Every all the economic indicators, indicators, right? Money flow. If you're looking at, um, you know, the overall market, you come here to the economy, and you can actually just uh, push it out and say North America. This will give you uh, some of the, you know, indicators that are coming out in the news. So if you wanted to look at, you know. Um, you know, the job claims or initial claims. And you come here and it's going to give you this increment, you know, you can go down, go down to weeks, right? You know, you'll see uh, claims here. I just want to give you some indicators so you can see, you know, and it's actually showing that, you know, it is moving up. Uh, if you go down to, a, let me give you a different one, uh, unemployment. Unemployment level, you have different states. Um, you know, you see the unemployment is also down. And then you go to things like inflation. I'm just giving this uh, to guys because, you know, when we have these, you know, uh, economic indicators coming out, you know, always zoom out to see where you're at. Now you see inflation, you know, was super high up to nine. And of course, it's, it's coming down now, eight and a half percent. 
and it's hitting a, you know, this is a support level. And if it starts moving down, we, you know, for the end of the year, um, you know, we're still going to have the, the stock market. And I think we still can move up. So uh, when you see it's trending down, meaning that inflation, it, it stopped going up. You know, the stock market still should be, you know, really the only game in town that investors are going to invest in. And then, you, then they look at alternative investments. So crypto and in the stock market, you know, uh, uh, cash and Bitcoin, to me, they're, st they're still, de still desirable. And don't let the short term, uh, a couple of days or even a week, you know, long-term crypto is still uh, being developed and, be and maturing. So all these economic indicators that we have here, uh, the, the earnings, the world is changing. You know, so when you see the earnings and you see companies like Bed Bath & Beyond, Best Buy, um, you know, they're going to be impacted by just the new world, right? Being impacted by people aren't going to stores as much. Right. So earnings are always going to kind of shake out. But healthcare, um, you know, developers, you know, it is still moving up. Uh, certain necessities like healthcare, you know, is an indicator, energy, uh, things are changing, going into solar. Um, so you, you will see that. You will see that, you know, we're going through a transition period in history. And the trading opportunities are still here long term, um, you know. Wealth it is it, it is made in the in the times when the markets are down, and being in crypto right now it is a, a gift. Um, you know we talk about the regulation, we talk about um, you know play to earn games and and uh, learn to earn, uh, move to earn. You know we have a whole entire new industries being developed in these markets. So. Uh, with that being said, the dollar is still up. VIX is still under 20. When VIX is under 20, you're still seeing, I mean, you know, it can go from 14 to 16, 17. The economy is still in good shape. When VIX goes over 30 and 40, that's when you know that the economy is, um, you know, on, on a downward. And so if we look at the VIX over a period of a, a year. You know, uh, where is that? You see, it, it hasn't stayed over 30 um, for, you know, in a long time. It, it's it's kind of like weeks, and then it comes right back down. So, you know, that just tells you that, you know, the, the money is still being made. We had these up and down periods, but overall bullish uh, is the way to go. All right, with that being said, we got people on the call now. Uh, we're going to get started with our profit call. I'm going to uh, turn it over to derail and then um you know we're gonna start going through some of the tools all right appreciate it all right. um so i wanted to hit on that uh bed bath and beyond that you mentioned jamar um and the only reason i want to hit on that is you know i follow jim kramer you know sometimes he says some ridiculous stuff but uh, what i did find interesting a couple of days ago granted i didn't take a trade based off this but um he pretty much tweeted i keep hearing that bed bath is the next jc penny um, it makes a lot of sense, especially with the same store sales down an astounding 27%. Almost nobody comes back from that nobody. Um, so the reason I bring that up is, guys, you know, if we utilize our tools, you know, we're looking at the news, we're, we're in tune with the market. Um, you know, a lot of us could have technically caught the Bed Bath & Beyond sell-off that actually happened today. Um, granted, it was a week later, but it was triggered by the CEO selling, what was it, I think 9.5 million of his shares. Um, so if we go back to a chart, for example, if I'm looking at the uh, Bed Bath & Beyond chart, you know, first off, I just see, you know, explosive growth out of nowhere. Um, and then we kind of stalled out, you know, right here around the 10th. If we go back, the 10th was around here. Um, that was right before the run-up. We had this nice run-up, but then all of their earnings and everything came out. Um, and you realize, you know, they're they're not doing so well. Um, so when they're not doing so well, you know, if you see a big move like this, it's probably going to be a big correction as well. So me personally, um, I don't think this is done selling off. I'm going to definitely be watching it for more sell off. Um, but I just wanted to quickly bring that up since Jamar touched on it, that you can use news 
um, you know, following these high profile guys on Twitter and kind of get a heads up and kind of get a trade idea prior to it happening, because this was tweeted on the 10th. You know, today is the 17th. Right. Um, so and, I just wanted to, to quickly share that. And, and one of the things you're saying is, you know, is a squeeze. A lot of people right. some short, and so mm -hmm. they squeezed out. Yep. Um, you know, which means that, you know, people had to cover, and that's why the price is going up. But, I, you know, you look at it now, there's really no reason to, to hold on to a long position. Right. When you have this heavy selling, unless you're trying to get a higher position itself. Right. Yep. And if we look, you know, on the 10th, when we found out the news that they're down 27% sales, you know, price was at $9, we're at 23. <laughs> you know, that's been a 3x run just in the past week. So I think, you know, if this does continue to roll over, which I personally believe it will, um, we have a lot of room to go. Um, I think today, if I read correctly, they had to pause trading on a Bed Bath & Beyond early today due to volatility. So, you know, normally when that happens, you're going to have continued selling. <laughs> you know, you usually don't have one big day of selling like that, and then it just disappears the next day. So um, definitely a quick trade idea to to keep in mind. Right. Uh, yeah, Nick said, may parabolic move, Elliott Wave is over. I agree. Elliott Wave is over, you know, probably going to come down to previous support, which in my opinion... Um, Man, it, it hit that level before, and if you guys do puts or... or uh, Get set up for next week. I think you'll be in good shape. Exactly. And even if you look here in the past, you know, back all the way to March, uh, what was this, March 4th and also March 29th, that was the previous high as well where it kind of got pushed down off of. So, you know, just having that data in front of you and just having basic, you know, technical analysis skills, um, this, this could have been an easy trade for a lot of us. Uh, like I said, I didn't take it, but, you know, I'm going to definitely – uh, make a mental note for next time because you know you always want to improve as a trader you're not going to catch every trade um, but you can continue to learn uh, you know different tactics so I think that was something to definitely look out for you know if they're down 27 percent which like Kramer said nobody usually comes away from that okay um, one more thing I wanted to share real quick uh, this came out a couple hours ago I'm not sure if uh, anybody's heard of this um, but Canada has just uh, imposed some new restrictions on crypto. Um, and basically, they're taking a different approach than I've seen before. And basically, if you live there, you're going to have net buy limits that affect the amount of crypto you can buy up to 30,000. These limits will reset annually after 12 months have passed. So they're going to offer the top four at cryptos, in their opinion, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. It's going to be completely unrestricted and does not count towards your limit. Now, the key thing here is when you buy restricted cryptocurrencies, you use that limit. And selling restricted cryptocurrencies will add back to your limit, a maximum of 30000 So what this is basically saying, guys, that in Canada, um, I want to say it's already passed or is basically on the table to become official. Um, you know, if it comes to altcoins and a lot of these coins that we're trading, you know, making 5x, 10x, whatever it is, um, they're limiting them in places like Canada. So the reason I bring it up as well is, you know, usually it starts somewhere and then it trickles down to other places. Um, so I think it's something we should definitely be aware of. Um, I'm really not sure how they're going to track that. I mean, it's a very interesting concept. I don't know if their meaning as far as cashing out from a centralized exchange, you know, so, from exchange to bank account, not really sure, but, you know, definitely, definitely something we want to, to so, keep an eye on. on. Go ahead, Jordan. So here's my theory. Mm -hmm. My theory is by October and November, we're going to see uh, globally, you know, currencies, you know, kind of move to digital assets and for countries that have been dependent on the dollar, such as like Canada, you know, they don't want their guys all investing in some of these currencies that maybe they know are not going to be regulated. And so they're trying to min minimize the losses. And what they're saying is that Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, I don't even know about Bitcoin Cash, but Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, uh, you know, are, are, are maybe going to be unimpacted by the global remittance system that, that I think is going to pass around October, November. And if that's the case, there's going to be a lot of altcoins you know, I'm not trying to scare no one, but, um, you know, it's just a theory because we've never been through this period in history before. 
You know, I'm, I'm thinking that some of these countries are trying to minimize the damage for the citizens. And, and Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin maybe uh, will keep the wealth in, in their country with their people. Right. And and just from a trading perspective, Jamar, like, I mean, if you're limiting it to 30,000, I mean, imagine how much volume uh, will flow into these four, for example. You know, if this does become a mass adopted policy, you know, I don't know if they're going to interchange out some of these coins, but I know for a fact, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are probably going to be on the list for most countries if we do go this route. I mean, that or, itself could could help pump uh, the value and price of the, the top four. Or or let's flip it the other round. Maybe mm -hmm. some of these altcoins like Stellar and Algo and USCC, they don't want people to have all their funds in there because maybe they're trying to limit the wealth that comes out if everybody started buying those cryptos, those other altcoins. Right. right. Maybe it's a limit to those altcoins for a certain reason. And, you know, I, I had actually an email from someone today that's saying that he's trying to get 30 million of XLM, which would be about 1%. Hmm. So you got guys that are trying to buy in, like, a large amounts of those standards that are supposed to be coming out, especially while the price is down. So I was going to talk about that as well. Things like XLM, XRP, uh why it would be good to you know make sure you have some at least right i agree so yeah in interesting times guys like i said we haven't been through it before you know we're all going to get through it together but you know definitely keep your your ears peeled in this uh this space right now this call um, might be very important in four months <laughs> i'm telling you hey we're gonna be like man <laughs> hey we're gonna need multiple wallets multiple everything <laughs> so you know Darrell and i we, we've been talking and, you know, we decided to liquidate some of our NFTs. We decided to kind of start, you know, building some alternative uh, alternative strategies uh, on, on what we're doing with our, you know, portfolios in general. Right. Yeah, guys, the, ape, the apes got to go. <laughs> <laughs> the but ape, good thing, Jamar, we know that for a year, we got lower taxes. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we liquidating a, a lot of stuff. Right. So, I sold right. a Clone X yesterday. Just, just FYI. What, so, how much did you sell it for? Uh, Sixteen thousand. All right, it's a nice payday. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, hey, what was the it was, uh, net cost for each one? You think if you had to guess? Uh, the net cost. I mean, probably. I mean, I, I got them for airdrop, so I think it was like what five hundred bucks, six hundred bucks. Hey, not bad. <laughs> thirty still extra, got, turn, thirty plus. Still got a lot of them left, but you know. Uh, I want to I want to be balanced going into the end of the year. Right, right. All right, so just like I said, guys, quick update there. Um, Jamar also hinted on this as well, um, but, you know, the Fed minutes dropped um, and pretty much said, you know, pretty much Powell said the next hike could be unusually large again. <laughs> um, a lot of people thought because the CPI that came out, I believe, last week that maybe we wouldn't have as big of an increase. Um, this next go round, um, but based on the minutes from the Fed, that may completely be wrong. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to share this article real quick because I know we definitely want to stay in tune with the market. Um, hold on, let me actually share this Twitter link for the Canada information as well. All right. Uh, and yeah, just a quick thing here with the Coinbase. I don't know if y'all heard about the insider trading. So they're under, you know, that big investigation um, for multiple employees within the space or uh, like I said, under investigation for insider trading, where they're essentially were buying tokens ahead of the listing. Um, so the reason I brought this up is we know the crypto market is very, very uh, sensitive to news. Um, so if more information comes out about this. Um, that could be a catalyst that they use. To drop the market um, because like Jamar said, you know, going into early September, we normally see that drop. Um, so I, I've started to see the news kind of shift back to the negative side um, over the past couple of months, in my opinion, uh, you know, on this big run up, we've been seeing a lot of positive news. Um, now it's like it's slowly, you know, not everywhere, but it's slowly starting to shift to the negative side. So, you know, I'm just going to read in between the lines, um, you know, obviously trade what I see, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm watching them. So, you know, something to look out for there as well. 
Um, so now I'm going to quickly go to the charts real quick, just for the, the main coins that I normally go over on this call. Um, so if we look at ETH, you know, pretty clear uptrend. Um, as far as the EMAs I use, it's, it's definitely still intact right now. Um, I wouldn't be concerned unless we close below this 800 here at 1672. Uh, but what I did want to show, um, if we go back in the past, we had this very extensive consolidation zone that a lot of people, if you remember during this time, um, you know, thought this might have been the bottom, honestly. Um, but, you know, we held that floor from May 12th to about June 12th for about a month. And then we broke down to the all-time lows, the recent lows um, here at 880. Um, but if we kind of draw a line at the top of this zone of consolidation, you'll see we're kind of playing in that zone right now. So if you're a trader, um, that's a very important space. So, you know, if we do end up breaking up to the top of this zone, um, I think we can see some very strong movement in ETH and also the altcoins, um, but vice versa in the same direction. Um, if we start to close below this, you know, previous zone here, you know, which would also kind of line up with our 800 EMA once it catches up, um, you know, we, we could see some downward movement in the market. And like I said, that may, you know, line up perfectly with what we're expecting in September. You know, we very well could get a push up here, you know, maybe hit the top of the channel, maybe go a little bit above. Um, and then we get that rollover. Um, so just, you know, if you want to mark those zones on a chart, this is the important area I'm concerned about. Um, and we're just going to sit back and, you know, see what happens. But as of now, you know, we're still in this uptrend. Um, so I'm not going to make any quick movements, but, you know, definitely just wanted to point that out to the guys who are uh, trading. Um, same thing with NASDAQ. The chart looks almost identical. Um, if we go back into the past and NASDAQ, um, you know, not really heavy consolidation zones in the past here. Um, I guess you could go back to here and say in February, but, you know, nothing as strong, in my opinion, as ETH. So right now, I'm still very bullish um, on a NASDAQ, you know, up until we get some information on the rates. Um, so how I've kind of been trading NASDAQ um, recently is since we're in the, you know, a clear uptrend. Uh, my biggest entries are just breaking the uh, recent local highs. So what I mean by that is if we look here on the chart, you know, our recent, what I call local high was 13,670. Um, you can day trade, you know, in between here, but I feel like the safest trade, since we're already in this strong uptrend, is just to wait for longs, you know, at this 13,700 area. Um, like I said, obviously you can trade in between, but if you want to be a safe trader, you know, a super conservative, confident trader with high probability entries, um, that's what I'm personally looking for. And, you know, if you trade with me, um, you've been using my strategy, which a lot of people have been, you know, sending me DMs or whatever saying they've been enjoying it. Um, that 200 has been holding strong like a champ. So, you know, everything looks good right now. Um, I'm going to look to, you know, take some longs in the morning if there's 200 holes. Um, we're just going to see what happens. All right. Uh, I'm going to save the, yeah, because I'm going to go over some of the altcoins we called out uh, two weeks ago when I was on the call. So before I do that, I'm going to uh, switch it over to you. Uh, Lance, am I using a buy stop? Yes. Um, so for me personally, I trade on MT4. Um, I have a buy stop set right here, you know, kind of at this high. I have the same buy stop set on ETH at this high. Um, and I'm just going to wait to, uh, you know, wait for it to trigger. You know, it may not trigger. It may trigger in a day. It may trigger in three days. You know, I really don't care. Um, I just want to trade what the market gives me. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I do have buy stops. Um, and normally what I do is I scale in. Um, so if I have a buy stop here, it's going to be about 25% of the position I really want to take. And as it goes up about, you know, 20 units, 30 units, I will add on to my position on the way up. Um, but yes, I do have a buy stop set at that area. All right. Any other quick questions? All right, cool. I'm pass it back to you, bro. All right, cool, cool. So um, let me share my screen. So, you know, I, I want to just go ahead and start giving, dropping some uh, jewels and, and help. Um, you guys know I like to use kind of like the naked charts and, uh, you know, in, inside of, kind of a elite conversation. Um, you know, I use the auto pips, but the chart here is uh, called the Murray Math Lines. And it's just a another tool to be able to identify, you know, uh, 
major support levels. Uh, you know, if there's Camarillas and, and uh, pivot points in 20s and, and 50s, you know, adding this indicator into your um, trading view. You know, someone was asking me, like, why do I have, why do I use so many charts? And, you know, all these different charts and all these different, you know, strategies that I have, I'm looking for com confluence, right? I'm looking at different signals and giving myself confluence because I want to be, I want to have um, a little bit more confidence when I want to see what everybody else is using. And so on these ranges, you know, when I'm day trading, I'll look at these levels here and it actually gives me a pretty good idea with support and resistance. So even on the sell on ETH, right? 1870 is a lot of resistance on a for a day trader. And so it touched earlier today and then it, it failed. All right. And so from, from level to level, uh, even on here, you know, I've actually shared my chart and I share the explanation of how to use these levels. And then on top of my indicators, uh, I actually put the auto fib. So I had an auto fib in the, in the Murray math lines, and then I have my candles. So I can tell that there is, you know, a, above average buying here. And right now you see kind of below average selling. So, you know, my level to level would be from 1820 to 1870. And some of the people took the uh, hint that I dropped in the Discord when I says, hey, as long as it's above 1820, it is a, it is a, um, it's still a loan, right? And this level hasn't, hasn't dropped. It had level here from 1957 to 1827. All this is just level to level trading. So, you know, this is also an easy way for, you know, the day traders to kind of know where you're getting in in trades and and uh, being able to kind of see levels driven out with support and resistance. We have so many tools that should make it easier for us to trade, but a lot of guys don't give it an opportunity to, to actually take the data and see where they're at. So, you know, and then I asked, had a question of why I use the 13 minutes. It is... You can use the five, you can use whatever that you're used to trading, but you got to have practice on trading these. And you see here on the five minute, it, it talks about an intermittent uh, bullish reversal. And it came down here and it, it popped back. And here is a weak stop reversal. So level to level, uh, you know, just using these levels to trade off of, uh, will you can add this chart. You know, don't change the alligator. Don't change uh, your Camarilla or, or if you're trading with beach mode, you know, you add this in so you can actually get confluence and you can use these on the same time frames that you're trading. You know, for me, it's a 13 minute and the four, four hour because I'm normally swing trading or scalping a intraday move, right? And it gives us uh, the fundamental strategy and then you build on with these extras, like Rhoda is saying. So I'm not telling anybody to use this and it, it, it's, it's giving you confluence and now you're, you're adding something extra there was above average selling earlier today during the feds and people think that oh man we, we're going into a, a a reversal now we're bearish we're just trading from zone to zone and we just happen to be on a low part of the zone right now now if this area happens to break and you see you're going lower now you're trading and you have an opportunity to go short right and that is the managed risk uh that that we're trying to take so I want to give you tools to, to, to be able to do it um, and, and then be able to put it inside the, um, inside the, in the Discord and we talk about it. So, I mean, it was a lot of good conversations, uh, you know, guys talking about, are they going short, are they going long? Uh, you know, this, is, you know, when I put a statement in there, I, I, I pretty much believe in it. I'm not guessing. Uh, I'm telling you that, hey, if it's under 820 and then also, you know, with, with the cycles, you know, when someone's talking about the cycles, you gotta you gotta give it a year of testing and, and using it before you you can say you're proficient at it. So you know you stick with what you start with, and then you build upon that. All right. Secondly, you know, you know I've been looking at coins, um, and I've been looking at you know I've been hearing guys talk about the DeFi bank, um, and I, I want to you know bring up one that you know, came on my radar and it was based on the, the coin amount. You know, when, when you guys hear people talking about the Jabara trades, right? 
CLT, uh, which is a coin loan, right? It is a, um, you know, I'm watching it. I want everybody to put it on their on their watch list, right? It has 22 million coins. It has low volume right now. Um, and you'll see in the last year is up 60%. The last 30 days is down five, which isn't big. But as the bullish market comes back, You'll see guys start borrowing, you know, taking loans out. Let me see if it, um, you know, I'm, I actually have an account here. Um, you know, you can you can tell here on the um, interest accounts that it, you know, if you had, you know, now this is still centralized. So, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to come over here and, and really start playing with a centralized platform. Um, but if you see the the loans that that they're lending out. Let me see. Uh, trying to see where is the um, the interest rates. So on stablecoin, you know, you're borrowing from five to eleven percent, but they're also paying eleven percent if you're actually uh, put it out to to loan. So to get 11 percent on stablecoin is pretty high. You know, that means that if a guy had 100000 and wanted to stake it over here, at the end of the year, he made 10000 just for parking his stable coin. Um, and then the minimal loan amount that guys can take is 1000 So the interest accounts, um, you'll see here for Bitcoin Cash and, and um, you know, XMR is 5% interest. And then as you come down here to the stable coin, 10%, 10%. Uh, PAX, stablecoin. I think at the end of the year, this platform, you know, loans it can stay, uh, you know, the fiat currencies, the pound and, and the euro, loans this can stay solid. I'll be looking to see more volume come in because as more volume comes in, more trading volume, and more guys use the platform, you know, this has a, this token, CLT, has a pretty good opportunity to to go up even more, especially when you can borrow against, right? All time high was 192 uh, two years ago. And, that, you know, maybe it just came out uh, blasting out, but, you know, it being down to 16, uh, you know, I, I like to say it's low risk. Um, you know, once you start seeing volume come in. So you look at the historical data, right? On these, on these coins and you start watching the volume. All right, and that's kind of what I look at the volume, op you know, open and close as the market becomes bullish and guys taking out loans. Um, you know, you can you can look and see that it's been ranging between uh, on a low side sixteen and on a high side in the last month uh, nineteen. So you know, it breaks out at nineteen, it goes on twenty. Uh, that's what I'll be looking for, and I have alert set that if it crosses twenty. And, you know, these likes, I'll even look at the likes and see how many people are, are following this. And, then, and as that number grows and it gets over a thousand, you know, it, it shows us that it is growing. So I wanted to put this on everybody's radar because one, um, of course, it's a centralized platform, which comes with its own risks, especially in this environment going to the end of the year. Uh, but, you know, for guys, you can actually borrow up to 70 70 percent 80 percent so you put in ten thousand of your stable coin you're earn, earning ten percent and then you also can borrow up to seven thousand out of it which you know and die which now you have 17 um but that's for the guys that are on your DeFi banking be your own bank um you know asset i'm not going to keep i'm not going to put a lot of funds over here but if i if i wanted to borrow you know I'll be risking 3000 right? I put 10000 in, take seven out, earn interest on the staking on the 10, and then be able to have a seven. And so really what you're doing is risking 3000 on a stable coin, right? To earn that earn that 10%. And then also now, now that 10000 turns into 17000 7000 can be at play. 10000 is on the platform, right? So a 70% loan, LTB. All right, um, let me just give you another one real fast. Uh, things that I'm watching. Uh, you know, I'm looking for traders to kind of keep their eyes on things that were high at one point and now they're low and they're starting to make moves. 
right? You have something like uh, X, you know, Counterparty, which is a game, and it is moved over to the X chain. But uh, today it was up to about uh, five or six. Uh, over the last thirty days, it's up, um, you know, fifty six percent, and you know, in its high, it was at ninety one. And so when I just look at it, the ninety day chart, you know, two dollars was low. And you see here, you know, hitting five, it breaks out at five. Um, and you have you have opportunity for it to start breaking up. So this is another on the radar because I like things that can go up 200, 300, 400 percent. And I'm watching the trading volume. I'm looking at the historical data. Uh, in the past, this has been up, you know, to 40, 50, 60. So, you know, now I'm in stalking mode for the fourth quarter. And I'm starting to look at targets that, you know, I anticipate making more money in the fourth quarter, especially coming off this uh, bottom. And I know that guys are, you know, thinking that we're going to reverse and, and we're, we're still bearish. This is a bearish bounce. That's what they're calling it. Uh, in the meantime, I know all the money is made during bullish periods. And so a lot of people are stuck in the bearish, you know, pops and, and we're going back down. Uh, I'm looking for the opportunity uh, because I like to make money in the fourth quarter. And, you know, whether I'm religious or not, I celebrate Christmas. <laughs> and I expect to get a standard run. So, uh, you know, uh, a couple of more, you know, if we look at uh, some of the things for the global remittance that we've been talking about, uh, XLM, I want to give you guys some targets. You know, you, you see where, where we're at on this. You know, in the past, it's going from 12 uh, to 31, which is almost like a 200% return. Uh, XLM and for the golden with all the standards, the global remittance system, you know, guys that are, you know, asking me for advice and, and talking to me, I'm I'm looking at XLM and I'm buying. Uh, I'm going to have a bag uh, going into the end of the year. Things like Algo, you know, they're all at the same level and they've been here before. And so I rather buy it when it's ninety percent down uh, than buying it when it's fifty percent. All right. And so as the funds come back in, we have no restrictions, even on things like so algo, algo, you know, you get it under, you know, 25. It is a buy. Right. XLM under 12 is a buy. XRP under 32. But, you know, I don't think it's coming back down under 32. If it is, it is a buy. You know, and right now a lot of people are buying into it I mean, because you see XRP is not dropping. So do I like XRP? It's centralized. I, I, you know, I tend to believe now decentralization has failed. The, the money is going to be made on some of these centralized platforms, some of these centralized coins. And I'm a trader. I'm in it for the money. And so I want to trade what I see. And we all see these starting to curve up a little bit. And, you know, if, if, if you know, 100%, 200%, 300%, I'm not just, I'm looking long-term to, to get as much as possible. But I, I know a lot of these altcoins, the reason why I'm showing you Zcash and Algo and XLM is because they fit the ISO 2, 220 standard. So if you're looking for, uh, you know, you'll see me looking up New World Order and all this other uh, stuff. But um, let me see, compliant crypto lists, June 23rd. You know, a lot of people are talking about it. I want to keep it on your radar so you at least have a bag. So if, if, if things get crazy, plan to have an average like like uh, Nick is saying. You know we'll we'll buy into it. And some of these these payment systems, everything is is um, lined up by October and November. You know globally, right? And so globally, you'll see Bank of England. Uh, you know a lot of things on the Swift. Uh, comes November, which is the system that we're on. Um, you know, all in the other other places, you know, they've already started. Uh, the clearing houses. So here are some of the follow cryptocurrencies. Algo, XRP, Quant, HBAR, XLM, IOTA, XCC Network. These guys have been buying. Uh, you, you've seen big buys. And, you know, it started six months ago. And you'll see the price kind of just been floating around in the same area, uh, any any of these. So for some reason, it's not going up or down. 
and they're like, somebody is accumulating. When I got guys sending me emails, I want to get 30 million of XLM, you know, they're not buying it all at the same time. So, you know, this, this, this area here, it is moving from June, from May in, in June to now, you know, the price is going to only, you know, from 28 to 39 and it's in this range here. So, you know, you're taking for what you're worth. You know, we, we are discussing, this is the profit call for a reason. Uh, I'm not going all in on any of this, but I, I'm making sure that I have some long term i've already had it and if i'm down i'm not selling it so i'm just buying more of it as i get profits all right cool man back to you mr nerf Elite. all right cool cool all right so just a quick shout out on this coin since we're mentioning uh cryptos we're looking at dca in um one i I've, I've held for a while and you know mentioned literally months ago um it's a gaming coin a uh, kind of a gaming launch pad that a lot of the big uh, brands are, you know, either building on or supporting is, is called a S fund. Um, I think I have the, let me just get you guys the uh, ticker symbol as well. So here's the coin gecko. Um, pretty decent volume, about 2 million a day. Uh, pretty, you know, nice low market cap at 89 million. Um, but as Jamar likes and I like as well, a uh, fairly low supply at 35 million. Um, you know, Twitter's super active, everything like that. Um, what I'm personally looking at for a trade idea is I'm looking for entries around 237. Um, you can trade this on leverage as well, uh, or you could just buy a spot, honestly. Um, so, you know, since we've been in this uptrend, anytime we're at the 800 on the hour, that's definitely a big buying opportunity for me. Um, Pick some up down here for this buying opportunity. I sold out kind of quick because I didn't expect this big up move here. Um, but even from the last bounce was 150 all the way up to $3. So that's 100% um, just off that trade there. Um, so if you guys want to set some alerts down here at 235, uh, I do believe S1 will be a nice little bounce um, trade that we can take as well. All right, so let me keep it pushing. Okay, so yeah, Rhoda says Team Polygon is watching this as well. Awesome. So I'm glad some other DCG uh, teams see the value in it as well. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, um, so I was listening to to Richard Hart um, the other day. Um, like I said, I know a lot of people have mixed emotions about him, but as far as from a, uh, a technical side and just knowledgeable about the crypto space in general, um, it's honestly hard to find guys kind of on this level. Um, and one of the, the big things that he actually mentioned is the grayscale Bitcoin premium versus discount. Um, so I'm not as, you know, I'm, I'm not the expert in the whole grayscale thing, um, but basically what I understand is fractionalized Bitcoin. Um, and normally, you know, for the past two, three, four, five years, um, you could technically, you know, buy Bitcoin through them and then you could sell it six months later at a small premium. So it was kind of a way for, you know, big investors, you know, institutional investors to uh, buy Bitcoin and then essentially redeem it, you know, within a short window for almost essentially guaranteed money. If you, if you think about it that way, since there's such a big premium, um, but pretty much since about March 2nd, um, you can actually see that for the first time, their premium has actually turned into a discount. Um, so basically shareholders that, you know, may have bought it somewhere in this area, you know, now they technically have to redeem it at a loss or just continue to hold. Um, so kind of how Richard Hart broke it down is, you know, he's, he's infamous for kind of calling the tops to the market. And he literally kind of said, you know, around this time that once the grayscale Bitcoin trust goes for a discount, um, that can mean trouble because a lot of institutional investors are, you know, kind of stuck and they're, they're probably willing to uh, take a loss than to continue to hold the asset. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. I'm going to share the, the link to the chart here. There we go. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. And I also found this article um, that probably explains it a lot, you know, a lot better than I have. Um, so basically it just says here kind of what I said, while GBTC's premium was positive, 
the security provide an excellent opportunity to accredited investors, keyword accredited, you know, big money who could buy GBTC for Bitcoin at an NAV value in private placements. After a six month lockup, those investors could sell the Bitcoin on the open market and pocket that premium. So like I said, they were able to buy a spot and then, you know, literally sell it 35, 20, whatever that premium was in six months. So it's almost guaranteed money. Um, that was essentially a risk-free trade until the premium turned into a discount. This left investors who were waiting for the lockup to end to sell their GBTC out to dry as a premium they expected was replaced by a discount. So ended the grayscale trade. So another big reason why I mentioned that, guys, is grayscale still holds about 15 billion worth of Bitcoin and about 5 billion worth of ETH. Um, so Richard Hart was making a great point that as long as this is trading at a heavy discount, there's really no incentive uh, for a lot of the institutional money, at least that's going through grayscale, to continue buying assets. So that could actually spell trouble for the market that we could see some further uh, downside. Um, so, you know, just kind of wanted to share a different perspective. I mean, I personally never had thought about it like that, um, you know, but it, it makes total sense. So, you know, I'm going to keep an eye on this chart. I'm, what I'm kind of looking for is for this percentage to kind of flatten out and then curve up and then see how, you know, the charts kind of react after that. Um, because, you know, it may be a learning process now, but, you know, for future reference, this could be a very handy tool if there's a strong correlation uh, with the market. You know what I'm saying? So um, definitely something to think about there. And I'll share the article that kind of uh, explains everything as far as the trust and how the premium and discount works. Um, so you guys can have that. Okay, so let me get out of this. All right, so one thing I wanted to go over um, quickly is some of the uh, coins that we called out on the last profit call. So not last week's profit call. Um, I didn't get to make that one due to traveling for the uh, trading event. Um, so these, you know, these will be calls that were called out on August 3rd. Um, so I gave you guys a simple strategy when the market is trending. Um, I kind of told you guys that ETH kind of sets the tone. You know, as long as ETH is kind of doing its thing, the altcoins will, you know, very soon after follow. Um, and a strategy that I kind of gave you guys is the simple 200 moving average and just find coins that are trending for multiple days, a keyword multiple days on the hot pair screener. Um, so the first coin that we kind of mentioned was Hex. Um, and, you know, we're really below the 200 right here during the call. And, you know, I pretty much told you that um, due to the news itself coming out for Hex and just due to the trend it's in right now, um, any close above the 200, I would look for a quick swing trade. Um, so if you took that swing trade, you know, literally right after the call, you know, you're in at 4.6 cents. Um, within the next couple of weeks, it went up to seven and a half cents. So almost 100 percent return. Um, so, you know, if you didn't catch that, we're kind of in a similar, you know, spot here. Um, it looks like we're probably going to consolidate out here. The EMAs are kind of flat, so be careful. You know, we could get some downward pressure, um, but I'm just going to rinse and repeat and set my alert. So since we've kind of already had this down channel, we started this consolidation zone, um, I'm going to be look to, to buy HEX for a swing trade above 6.3 cents. Okay, so that's an easy trade, in my opinion, that you guys can set an alert for. HEX at 6.3 cents. Um, and then just ride it up, you know, at least to the previous high, which is seven cents. Um, you know, it's only a 10, you know, 15% gain. But if you can compound that with the cryptos, um, it pays well. Because if we look here, you know, just over the previous couple of months, every time we get momentum above that 200, you know, we're running, you know, literally at least 50, 60%. You know, from here, three cents to five and a half, almost, you know, over 50%. From here, 4.8 cents to 8 cents, 100 percent. Um, so just keep playing the trend, guys, as long as it's intact and just take your entries at smart areas. You know, wait till it clears the consolidation. And it's it's almost a, you know, I'm not gonna say a guaranteed win, but it's a very, very high probable uh trade for you. Okay. Um, to the flip side. I'm going to show you how you can, you know, save yourself some money. Um, so we mentioned this iMove, which is a move to earn new platform 
uh, that was mentioned a couple of weeks ago. It was very new. So we're kind of just, you know, filling it out to see what, you know, what it was going to do as far as price action. Uh, we did get some upward movement. Then we kind of got a correction. And if you kind of see here, before price just kind of broke in a spiraling downtrend, you know, literally the 200 EMA was that support. Um, so, you know, what I do, if I'm in one of these trending DEX tool trades, what I like to call them, my exit is simple. If we get a close below the 200 on an hour, I'm out the trade. That's simple. And I'm entering close to the 200. So what that does from a risk management perspective is if you're getting in close to the 200 and you're following your set of rules and you get a close below it, you're going to have a very small loss. I'd rather take a three, four, five, ten percent 10% loss on a, you know, an altcoin that's very volatile um, versus just holding it and praying and then you're down 30, 40, 50 percent. Um, so just how you can use it to trade to the upside, use it as a risk management tool as well, okay? And that's literally how I trade. Like, I know I've said it a million times. People are like, that's too simple, but it works for me. <laughs> I mean, just, I'm going to just keep it real. All right. Um, so one of the coins I have been uh, looking to trade now, um, they had a lot of news recently, is the UFO token. Um, and as you can see here, nice little trend. 200 EMA is holding nicely. Um, we just had a recent bounce here. So we're not at the 200 EMA, but what I'm looking for is a break above this 5597. And I'm going to buy some of this spot for a trade. Um, they've had really positive news coming out. Um, this is a gaming crypto. I'm going to go here to CoinGecko. Uh, what I like to see is, you know, fairly low market cap. We have 15 million volume a day, which is, you know, pretty decent for a low market cap point in a bear market. Um, and all of the supply is already out there. So they do have an extremely high supply. But the caveat to that is the supply is all already on the market. So there's no more coins that are going to come into circulation. So with that being said, there's really no external sell pressure um, to this particular project. So with all the news coming out, um, and it looks like it kind of found its bottom here, I'm going to continue to trade it to the upside. And as Jamar said, you know, even if we reach portions of these previous uh, highs that we traded at in the past couple of years, you know, right now we're at 500 Satoshis, not even all time highs, but just to this recent big uh, trading zone here, you know, that's 2,065 Satoshis. So you're looking at a 400% return. Um, so, you know, and we have volume coming into the market here. So those are the things and kind of the checklist that I personally go through. I want to see sentiment, which it has a lot of sentiment right now. I want to see volume, which it has here as well. Um, and then all my job is, is just to play the trend, you know, take my entries at the key areas, whether that's a break of a previous high or a previous local high, or if that's just simply my EMAs. That simple. Because we know with crypto, once we get a big push, you know, you're going to get at least that 10, 15, 20% um, upside. Uh, Nick said UFO was on the MMR up 122% if you bought on the second or third and sold near the top. So yeah, so, you know, that's all of us working together. Um, I didn't even know it was on the MMR. So it's on the MMR. You got the heads up. Um, you had the news that came out, you know, somewhere in here that gave you the heads up as well. Um, so, you know, there really was, you know, no excuse for it, honestly. Um, you just, just got to pay attention. All right. Uh, another coin. Um, I'm going to continue to trade. Uh, that's actually at a good spot right now. I was looking at before the call is SHIB. Um, I don't know what kind of freaking news they had, but, you know, it kind of rode this EMA, then it just, it literally just rocketed. Um, so right now we've kind of had a pullback. We're kind of resting at the 200 right here. Um, so I bought a little spot here and I just have a stop right below the 200 at 1440. Um, so a very low risk trade in my opinion. Um, because if you get stopped out here, you know, you lose what, I don't even know if that's 5%, um, but to the upside, you have the gain, you know, 10, 20 plus. Okay. And SHIB is, you know, of course it's a meme coin, but it's a well-known meme coin. You know, a lot of the newbie traders that got in the last run, you know, this is how they got introduced. So if you're thinking of the mindset of those guys, if this is what they first got introduced to, and all of a sudden it's back on the news, they're hearing about it again they may be enticed to, you know, trade and FOMO back into the project. I mean, it's just pure, you know, human psyche. So I, I think SHIB is a good, good opportunity right here. Um, 
my opinion is probably going to rest here for a few hours and then we we might see some movement um but even if you took an entry now stop below the 200 you're you're very safe because you're only losing three four five percent okay let me get past that i should okay um another coin that i saw trending uh pretty often was this lite token um, you know, we had some price action here, and then we kind of had this big dump. But if we kind of zoom in here, we're literally sitting right at closing above that 200. And recently, we had a lot of volume kind of come into the market to kind of get it over that hump. Um, so right before the call, because um, this candle closed about two hours ago, uh, I took a spot trade on this with a stop right below the 200 as well at about 590. Right now, price is at 620. You know, even if we go to the top of this previous resistance here, that's 860, you know, that's what, 20, 30%. Um, you know, and like I said, guys, I'm willing to risk 5% every time to possibly make 20, 30. And if you repeat this cycle over and over, um, you can compound your account fairly quickly, you know, even in a bear market. Um, so overall, we're in a bear market, but when we have these nice little runs like we do, where the structure of things like ETH is just perfect, like a nice steady uptrend, um, you can actually make way more profits just trading these trending uh, Dex tool coins. Um, and like I said, I have an Excel sheet to where I, I'll write the ones down or place them in the spreadsheet um, as they come up. You know, if I see it two or three days in a row, I put it on the spreadsheet. You know, I have an alert set for it and, you know, I just go from there. So, I mean, simple trading. You don't have to make this uh, super complicated. Um, and lastly, uh, another one that's been on the alerts all week as well is this SUZ UME. Um, same exact scenario, guys. Kind of riding this 200 here. We had an explosive move. Um, we're not at the 200 here, but what intrigued me about this one is this is the all-time high, and we were pushing right up there right before the call. Um, so I'm going to set some alerts here at 9470. And if we get a break above, I'm going to scalp it for about 10 to 20%. Um, nice volume that came in here, you know, really one of the biggest or the biggest volume on the chart. Um, so that gave me confidence with it being a green candle and green, green movement following that volume. Um, I'm pretty confident that if we can get a break above and a close above 94.05, um, we can at least get a 10 to 20 percent run for this this token as well. Um, it's up 62 percent for the week and even the past 24 hours up 25 percent. All right. Um, so I'm going to drop the Dex tools for these coins, just so you guys can monitor and follow along. Um, you know, I'm basically giving you the blueprint, guys. It doesn't have to be hard. Um, it really just requires the patience. Um, you know, when I first started trading crypto, I always felt like I had to be in a trade at every single moment. But the moment, you know, I kind of stepped back and say, you know, I don't have to be in a trade every day. I don't have to be in a trade every second. Um, let me just stick to one strategy and only, <laughs> you know, take entries based on that strategy, basically trading like a robot, um, you can be successful because like I said, your stops are gonna be very small, okay? Um, oh yeah, and one other coin is Kate coin. So this was called out as well on the call two weeks ago. This was our meme coin pick. If you're, if you're on the call, I'm gonna pull up the chart for this. Same thing. Um, we had our run here. Like I said, we called it out on the third. It was around 1026, ran up to 2599, you know, over 100% return there. We had our retracement consolidation, and now we're kind of picking back up. Volumes coming back into the market, and meme coins are starting to gain sentiment right now. Um, if you don't believe me, we go to CoinGecko, we go to categories. I want to say it's the highest category right now. If I go, Everything else is in red across the week. If we look at meme coins, they're up 15% on the week. Um, so that's how I kind of filter out the sectors that may still continue to get movement while everything is down. So that gives me confidence as well in Kate coin. And like I said, where is it at, guys? Say around right 200. You get in now at 1413, stop at a close below 13, you know, 70. You're not risking that much, but you have a lot to gain. Okay, and this honestly, just by a visual test, you know, this isn't a bad looking chart, honestly. Um, we had our peak volume here, we sold off, we got more volume coming in, but we're not just selling off, we're kind of holding. So that gives me confidence as well. 
we kind of got this W action going on. So I think this is a good trade as well to uh, swing for a few, you know, 10, 20, 30 plus percent. All right. Um, and I'll drop the DEX tools for that as well. Uh, any questions on that? See, Lance said, tis the season. Yeah, Lance, says, it is, you know, I'm in go mode with the alts. If, if ETH is above that 800 on the hour, I'm trading alts, period. <laughs> if ETH ain't, I ain't really messing with them. All right, so uh, I'm going to swing it back to you, bro, or Nick. All right. All right, cool. And um, let me uh make sure everybody got that screener. I just wanted to make sure because I, I made a call out saying, telling guys I was getting in dash. And so I just want to let you guys see that if you hit the screener, it is – it, it continues to pop up on that screener. So uh, that's something I like to trade. And then on this platform, shout out to Lance, shout out to Nick inside the mastermind. You know, uh, me and Nick, 2018 or, or 19, we were using the tie. And it had, um, you know, the funding rates. The information that's going to be available or that's be, becoming available to crypto traders you know, it is starting to become more and more institutionalized. And when I say that, you know, I know that there's a lot of talk in general about decentralization and being private. You know, you know, the private is good if, if, if you have operated in private in the past. But most of us have businesses, we have property, we have insurance, you know, we have the infrastructure. We live in America, you know. Taxes and, and, and moving money, you know, we have bank accounts. And when the IRS comes for you and you're not 100% private, they freeze them accounts. They freeze your business accounts. They freeze your personal accounts. And so, you know, be careful about, you know, crossing over and, and trying to learn all the private strategies in DeFi when, when you're living openly. If you got a house and you're paying property and, and, and you got cars and you got business, you know, business cars and you filing taxes, you know, don't get caught it's up. In, don't get caught up in the uh, idea that you're going to be private in crypto. You know, Jeez. if you, hey, uh, Jennifer, please go on mute. If you are, you know, uh, moving money, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 from crypto to, you know, and using centralized platforms, you already on the radar. So, you know, just be aware of that because I, I don't, I don't want to see, you know, guys get in trouble six months in a year and two years from now uh, on that. And then these platforms that we have, like this one, for, for instance, is for institutional traders. Um, and here you'll see that, you know, there's more people uh, in calls, you know, on ETH and then on uh, Bitcoin. Something's going on with my computer, but they have more calls on Bitcoin, more calls on ETH. Uh, even going into, and it breaks it down by uh, percentages. So when we talk about open interest, you know, this is what we're talking about that, you know, is, is the money being bet on puts or is bet on calls, which are, which are loans. More people are long on crypto and Ethereum and Bitcoin than they are short. So uh, with that being said, you have this dashboard that shows a lot of information uh, and when it says alternative derivatives, they're talking about everything outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And, you know, just go to the top 25 on the gainers if this comes up. Of course, you know, let me see. Why is it not uh, showing up now? Let me see if it's showing up over here. All right. I'll close that one out. And just use this one. So, you know, you see how much uh, volume on a put and call ratio. Then you come over here to the uh, the dashboard. These top movers, it will. I don't know. Is this coming up on yours, Nick? I want to walk guys no. through this for some we reason. Tried. Did you? Let me click on it. Hold on one second. Well, this shows the derivatives, it shows the futures, it shows the volatility uh, on the DeFi space. 
and of course everything is not showing up just on my screen. I think I have uh, too many resources being out right now. All right, Eth is uh, moving it's up. It's been too. slow for me too. Uh, it's been slow. I think we just, I think we've been looking at it too much. I wanted to show, um, you know, one is volatility chart that's going to show uh, anytime it hits up to seventy eight. You, you see it now? No, I don't see yours either. All right. You want to walk them through it, Nick, then? Since you're up there, let's give you some shine. Can y'all see my screen? <laughs> yeah, we see your screen. Okay, yeah. So basically you have uh, B uh, right now we're on this deriv derivatives dashboard with BTC and ETH, and it's got petrol swaps and then the futures. And so you're looking. Some of the stuff you want to look at really is like open interest or open interest change. Uh, uh, when, it, when they go to open interest, show them that when it's like uh, right when you hit open interest in the futures or even up there, if it's green all the way across where it says volume change, yeah. open interest and open interest change, normally that's going to be up. So which one is that? Well, that's this is all BTC. Okay. Right now because we're not on the altcoins. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, so that exchange is Mango. So I'm not sure what that is. So that may be. Let's go to all the derivatives because I want I want to see I want to show There's guys on the trading side. Uh, top movers, right? All right. So this is a way to actually, here. you know, identify trades that are um, they're giving funding. they and, and guys are going to buy it for the interest. Yeah, uh, it's where are you going? It's not loading. It's not wanting to load. Oh, it's not loading it. Yeah. So we get we're getting over overran with, with volume <laughs> during this time. But just go down to I think line where it says uh Binance. Um this is all BTC. You can't you can't tell. I wanted to show that when you see it all in green, it'll actually show oh, there we go. on the top movers, you know, which one is that's moving, like Celsius, BTC. Mostly green across there. Adam. Adam. Right. When you see these in all in green on the open interest and open changes, that means that institution money is coming in and you'll get short-term trades that will go up in price. You know, and so this is actually good for even when Bitcoin is going down, you'll see money coming into these that are identified as green, right? On an open interest and the open interest change. So, uh, you know, I wanted to show Celsius, Adam, ETC, you know, they all have a, a positive open interest uh, change. And that goes in line with our volume sentiment and timing. You know, sentiment, one, we look at the retail market. And then we also look at this, um, you know, institution market. You can put these on your watch list on a day and you'll see that any up, upward spikes Funds will be coming into these. And this is good for 10, 20, 30% uh, on a day, even with the leverage. So I'm not I'm not sure if you want to show uh, a chart. Let's pick up one, Adam or ETC. Uh, Adam, or, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you'll see that stream buying at the end of the, you know, at the end of that tail. That mm -hmm. is, you know, can, can be attributed to the open interest, right? And when it crosses over, you know, that gives you opportunities you to get a 10, 20, 30% move just by using the funding rates on that open interest. Yeah. And if we pat, and when, it looks good here because if you pass this level that we're at here, yeah, it's going to so push like probably. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I was saying, it's yeah, like, it like a good If we trade. get over this level we're at, that were rejected in this because it's past year too. It looks like it may push. Yeah, so so on this call, I'm not scared to tell you that if, on, on Ethereum pushing up, you can be in this atom as on a leverage trade and you can just get in and put a stop above where you got in and just let it ride because uh, we anticipate more funds coming in. You still got to manage the trade, but these are trade tips that you know, it's based on volume and it's based on sentiment and it's funding rate of institutions. 
that are that are buying in. Um, you also have, have this indices on here too, and so you can see in different sectors what's moving. So a different sectors, volume, right? Volume change. So with privacy so coins, privacy coin and layer two. Layer you can two. Do which one is to focus on for the day? Just the volume change itself. That dark green. The same way our candlesticks, when you see a stream buying, it is in dark green here as well. That's why we have our, our, our biome-based color-coded candlesticks extra dark green. It's the same here, layer two and privacy. And that's what you want to focus on for the day. Um, one of the things that, let me see. Let me pull this up real quick. Does it show the coins that make up the category that it's basing it off of? Uh, let me see. Go to privacy. Okay, right there. Okay, right here. Okay. So it's actually just those four. The privacy. Right. And see dash in that dark green? See that? Yeah, that and Zen, yeah. Zen, yeah. So if you guys are seeing that right now, while Ethereum is moving up, you could have been in a dash trade. You still can. And you can monitor while we're on this call. And you'll be good for 10, 20, 30 cent. You know, and if you're using gains.trade, you have you have your trade there. All right. And so I, I want, you know, we could be discussing this inside the Discord, but I wanted to put this out there since it is a private call. And now let me give you another tip on the volatility. This is kind of like the VIX. <clears throat> if you look here, it says move volatility. This is kind of like the VIX. When you see it, it crosses up, uh, this green line crosses over the red. It is telling you that the volatility is going to get higher. And the price uh, of crypto starts dropping. And when this price starts coming down, it's like the VIX is coming down. And it crosses under this red. You know the price is going to be moving up. The index price. So green crosses below the red, you know, price is going up. Green crosses over the red on the volatility index, kind of like the VIX, you know that the price is going down for that moment. All right. And this is on it from the uh, 10th to 17th. So this is almost like a, a, a VIX volatility for crypto. So a lot of the tools that we have in the stock market, we and it is, you know, comparative tool in the crypto market. So the things that we try to teach, where you trade stocks, options, you know, now we're just looking for the equivalent tool in the crypto side, and we're starting to see them. So you know, our goal inside the mastermind is to share this information, so we can make complete traders, and you can take advantage of trades. When we had the day trading live event, you know, those guys trading stocks, options, crypto. They were able to take any of the trades that were called out. That is kind of the goal for inside of the mastermind is to help you guys become complete traders and then have the tools and kind of understand, you know, how to use them. So this volatility, which is Devo, it's an index similar to the VIX in the, in the stocks and option in the S&P and equities market. It shows you when things are, are moving up. Now, if I zero in on this, and you know, just use today. Let's see if it comes up. Right? You know, we're starting to come down in here. And when we see this cross up, we know that the market will be back, be back up. Right. And you know, we can watch this right now. It is a Wednesday, you know, going in. This line will go up higher and it'll ride this high, and then it'll start coming down. Right. And then the market uh, will change. This green line start coming down price start coming back up. All right. So, hey, thanks, Nick, for uh, sh sharing that and, and kind of helping me on that. But, uh, you know, this FTX, you know, it has the volatility uh, as well in the overview. It's the same thing. You'll see this go across and you'll see this drop down and then, you know, we'll be back up again. Um, See the activity. Um, this shows uh, open interest. This shows that quarterly, um, you know, 
where guys are trading weekly. So most guys are, are trading on a weekly, on a weekly scale, you know, week to week, same way that we kind of trade. Right. And then sale volume. Right. There was a lot of sale volume uh, place, you know, for was this Q3. That means September. Right. And they're expecting, you know, a lot of guys are getting puts uh, for the end of Q3. Right. Which is September. So, you know, when Nick, you know, we were talking about it today, I was saying, I think it should stay above, you know, in August, we should be fine. But September, you know, I anticipate some volatility and some downside movement. You know, it may not go all the way down to, to 18 or 19, but in September, we should expect volatility. All right. And, you know, of course, we're going to just trade week to week like we normally do. All right. Uh, this calculator is for the option traders, you know, call along. Um, you know, just say a, a, a calculator that I kind of anticipate if you're doing options on crypto, it's still something new. Uh, this, these power trades is, you know, just on uh, Bitcoin and it's on expirations. So you'll see Bitcoin expiring um, and you'll see the volatility, you know, when it shoots up. But it's still not enough volume on the call and option side for us to really, you know, use this as a index, but that this uh, volatility is, you know, the volatility uh, platform is good. Let's see this uh, right here. All right, just trying to see if uh, anything else I can show you here. So, you know, as we get more tools, you know, we'll go over them, at least we'll better go over them first inside of DCG to kind of, um, you know, if anything we can use to help us straight, we're going to bring it up. All right. On that note, maybe this went over a lot of people's head, but for the advanced traders <laughs> uh, that traded stocks and options, you know, it's a start. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Um, one coin I have forgot to mention, uh, along with the Shiba hype that uh, we just mentioned, um, another good coin that looks good is Bone Shiba. Um, so this is actually the, I'm assuming the Shiba swap. So the way you can interact on their uh, platform, um, you know, very nice low market cap, uh, 6 million volume a day. Um, the TVL right now is about 68 million. So, you know, right on par with the market cap and then a fairly low uh, circulating supply at about 74 million. Uh, if we look at a chart, it has been flat for a while and we're just now starting to see movement. Um, we're just starting to see a lot of volume as well come into it. Um, so right now it looks pretty good for the setup. Um, we're sitting right here. You know, this recent hour candle looks like it's going to close um, back above the 200, which is usually your opportune entry. Um, even just looking at the history of this chart, you know, since it's been running, uh, the 200 has been a very solid uh, entry point for you guys. Um, so volume is still in the market here. Um, so when I see high volume after a correction and price isn't just melting, um, you know, I like to think of that as some absorption volume. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I'm not here to predict. But, you know, for now, it, it looks good. So I'm going to send you guys the uh, ticker symbol for that. Uh, here we go. All right. Um, one other quick announcement. Uh, here we go. Um, so a lot of y'all know what the Clone X's are familiar with the Murakami. Um, and I believe, Brother Mo, I'm not sure if he's on right now, but I believe he mentioned uh, this NFT that they're about to uh, raffle off again. There's like a registration phase. Um, so about four hours ago, he just made a post. Um, he says, you must have a Twitter account open before July 20th. Uh, you must follow the Murakami Flowers official account. Uh, I'll go ahead and drop that link for you guys so you're not guessing. Go back. All right. So you need to be following this account, guys, and then also this account on Twitter. All right. Um, that appears to be the only rules. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do something else, but this is all he said. Uh, 
you know, one NFT per person, registration will close at 5 p.m. when whatever this is, number 21 closes. Um, because he made a tweet right before that that just said, please read the following notes carefully to register for the commemorative NFT. The following conditions must be met. Please prepare in advance. Okay, so this event, I don't know how to pronounce it, but guys say or whatever, number 21 is on August 21st. So that's when we should uh, see that window close for the, I'm assuming it's another raffle, kind of like he did the Murakami Flowers, which if you won one of those raffles, is literally like a free 20, 30 grand uh, just getting dropped into your wallet. Um, depending how it's set up, uh, I might use a bot um, because I was looking at this article of the last time they did the raffle just because they, they don't really have any security measures. Um, one guy was able to score, I want to say like 200 or 80, something like that, 80 to 200 of the Murakami flower. So if you do the math on that, guys, it was like a free couple mil, like just by running a bot to, that just submitted uh, email addresses and a wallet address, you know, simple. Um, so, you know, this might not be as easy because you have to have a Twitter account established before this date. Um, so it makes it more fair, but, you know, we'll we'll kind of see what what happens. But I just want to put that in you guys' uh, view because that could be a free uh, NFT drop for you guys. All right. Um, one thing I will note is whatever this G-E-I-S-A-I -I page is, it's fully in, uh, let me see what language this is. Can't see my screen. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's by default in Chinese. Um, so if you want to read it in English, just click this English at the top right, and uh, it will convert the page for you. So it looks like this event is an in-person event. Um, I do know that anybody that attends the event uh, is going to get an NFT as well, but I think the event, yeah, is in Tokyo, so I'm pretty sure a lot of us aren't going to be there, but as far as the other NFT for the raffle, um, you should still be able to participate. Okay. Uh, one cool thing I did to see, I don't know if you guys watch Hell's Kitchen, but um, they just teamed up with Sandbox to create this new game starring uh, Gordon Ramsay. Um, for me, it's not really the game I guess I'm just super excited about. It's just the adoption um, of the metaverse. You know, it kind of shows you that even these high profile people are starting now to notice the metaverse and uh, essentially take action on it. Um, so what that tells me is when the run continues for crypto, whenever that may be, you know, I'm, I'm crossing fingers Q4 you know, especially if we get this big dip in September, um, that's where I'm going to focus a lot of my capital, okay? So I'm just trying to see around the curve, guys, um, before it gets here. You know, these are high-profile people. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody approached them, you know, that even had to convince them to even look into this idea. So for them to accept it and, you know, also put their name behind it, uh, for me, that speaks volumes. So, you know, play to earn, metaverse, gaming, uh, I still believe it's the future. Um, if we can get into a lot of these projects at the floor, especially if we get this big, you know, September dip, um, easy money for you guys. Easy, easy money. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, another coin to trade, Drip. Um, so if you've been in Drip, you know, we bottomed out here at four bucks. Now we're at nine. So what, 200% or sorry, 100% uh, returns. Um, but just from a trading perspective, uh, we're back here at the 200. Um, the last bounce, you know, gave us a nice little bounce here. Uh, so I'm going to continue to watch drip. Uh, volume has came back. Uh, if we look at, you know, pretty much this dip, you know, going back all the way back here, we didn't have a lot of volume consistently. Um, ever since this pump here, we've had a lot of volume consistently. And I think part of that is, A, the the opening of this, the biggest portion of the animal farm, the, the dog section, um, there's a lot of promo going on with Drip as far as like actual partnerships, not like, oh, we're partnering with somebody nobody knows. You know, they're talking pancake swap, um, direct integration possibly. So, you know, a lot of a lot of cool things coming, and you know, it looks like the market is reacting to that. Um, but just from a trade opportunity, uh, you know, 927 may not be a bad spot, you know, with a stop at 915, 916 with a close, low risk, uh, high reward. Okay. Uh, Get rid of that. 
Um, oh yeah, so this was a, a cool chart I saw. Um, they're basically, this chart is the 2008 crash, um, you know, the, the last recession. Um, you know, even the timing since the all time high is very identical. And, you know, this, this is just an opinion. I'm not saying this is fact, but based on this chart, you know, the bottom is definitely not in for stocks or crypto. Um, so basically here was the high of 2008. You know, we dropped these various levels to eventually we had the, you know, the end of the, the mega drop, the accelerated drop. Um, and basically at this point in time in 2008, you know, based on whatever chart this is, 318 bars since the all-time high, this is kind of where we were. You know, if we look at here, the current chart, you know, we're about 309 bars since all-time high. So not saying, guys, you know, this is going to play out directly, but um, usually the, it's it, it rhymes. Usually it's, it's, it's very close. Um, you know, even the structure here, you know, you have a drop, pullback, drop, pullback, drop. You know, you kind of have the same thing going on here. So it's very interesting, you know, especially coming into uh, September where we have a high chance of some selling. Um, you know, just just wanted to bring it to you guys' attention, you know, something to uh, something to keep track of. And, you know, it could be a chart that we can continue to monitor, uh, you know, throughout this bear market if it continues and, uh, you know, just use it to our advantage. All right. Um, one other thing. Um, cause I did have a, <laughs> I did have a friend, uh, he's not in DCG, but you know, he actually fell victim to this as well. Um, but you know, if you're on open sea guys buying NFTs, um, you might notice sometimes people are selling them cheap or below floor and you might see reported for suspicious activity. So in my opinion, I don't even know why open sea allows those to still be sold if they're already labeled as suspicious, but the point of this conversation is they will still allow you to buy them. And what happens is um, they can actually make the NFT void and then you're stuck with an NFT that you actually paid for that you can no longer trade because it's been reported for suspicious activity. So this is, you know, one of the top, you know, a, a very well-known uh, NFT collector. And, you know, he's basically complaining here that he bought this mutant ape you know, spent his hard-earned money, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, and now he's stuck with a dead NFT, and he can't sell it, um, you know, because if you're just a logical person, you would think, okay, I see it's labeled for possible suspicious activity, but if it's allowing me to buy it, then obviously nothing has been, you know, confirmed or whatever, you know, so just something to look out, guys, from a uh, security perspective, um, you know, I don't want guys in here, you know, crushing it and trading then they're like okay i'm going to diversify into a blue chip nft and, you know you might see one for cheap thinking you're getting a good deal and you're really just buying one that's possibly stolen and, and you're left holding something that's worth nothing okay so um just wanted to to put that on you guys' radar that this is happening uh in the market even right now okay um go to looks rare to sell yeah so it happened to me i had uh my lady and i bought it and then uh i looked in my wallet and it was reported for suspicious activity mm -hmm. open c wouldn't let me sell it and so i just went connected my wallet on looks rare and i just dropped the price and i sold it on looks rare <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> and i just got out of it as quick as possible so you know that, that was kind of my you know, my thing, if I have something that says suspicious activity, as soon as it comes up, I don't care if it's good or not, I'm out. I'm selling it wherever I can. Right. Yeah. And look, and looks are as good, um, you know, just for the listing rewards too. Uh, you know, if you sell NFTs there, you actually kind of get cash back as you can think of it. Um, and you actually pay a lower royalty percentage uh, than OpenSea. Uh, so yeah, so looks rare unless you do it, you know, <laughs> you end up in a buy, end up in a situation. It sounds like looks rare is the uh, the place to be. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't hold it. <laughs> yeah, don't hold it. <laughs> all right, um, but yeah, I mean that that's that's pretty much all I have, bro. Uh, all right, I yeah. kind of spit out my picks my picks early. So you know, if you if you're in the chat, I suggest saving the chat and just monitor the coins. Uh, that I mentioned, um, because like I said, literally like three or four of them from the last call went up 30% minimum, you know, some of them over 
Um, so just rinse and repeat the uh, the strategy, and uh, you know you should be good while while the market's trending. All right, and and so during this time, for me, man, I'm looking to turn a thousand into a hundred. I'm trying to go for big plays. So I want to show you guys, you know, kind of another another thing. I want guys to get back into the screening. You know, I want guys to be able to find these plays as well, and we start collaborating again. Um, you know, you come over here to crypto and you go to all coins, right? And it brings up all cryptocurrencies. It brings up this, this screen here. You know, I'll start off with the market cap from 1 million to 10 million, uh, the volume from 1 million to 10 million. And then I want to see what's changed 10 to 15, 50% in the 24 hours. And then I'll come over here to total supply, the market cap and the circulating supply. Let's see this, it has 14 million. You know, the total is 65 million. So anything under 100 million, you know, I pay attention to because you know, you'll you see that these are 17 cent, 23 cent now, uh, but it has uh, over a million in volume. So you'll see over a million in volume. So I come here to, to fear. So even Clearpool, uh, I'll go over here and I'll look at them. And so uh, Clearpool was up 45 percent today. Two million trading volume. Uh, and you'll see the 30 day, the 14 day, the seven day, this is trending up. And so it, it came from 0.4 cent and it's only up to like five, what is that? 0.5 cent right now. And you'll see it's coming off a low, right? And so, you know, a small amount right now and it's high nine months ago was at 255. So when I start seeing something starting to trend, you know, this, this comes on my watch list. And then, you know, also it had fear. You know, same thing here. This is coming off the lows. You know, uh, 25 days ago, it was at 14 cent. Hit a low. You know, today is at 17. And you look at the trend here, 30 days, 14 days, 7 days. It's trending up. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to continue to go. But now these become on my watch list. And a lot of times during this time last year, I got in things that were 10, 20 cent, and they end up going to 200 $300. Uh, not saying that it's going to happen, but that's how I found them last year. So last year in August, I was in COVID, and after COVID, I came out, and I had I had a great fourth quarter, you know, that took care of the whole entire year. So now, you know, I got these, and I put these on my list. You see, in 24 hours, seven days, 30 days, you know, but it has a billion, billion coins. Doesn't mean it's going to stop. It just means that's where it's at. Then I'll come here and I'll say, all right, let me go to the 10, 10 million, 100 million market cap. I'll do another search and I'll leave this the same. It'll give me some other coins to look at, right? This one's up. Uh, it only has 2 million, this manifold. So I'll come here and I'll look at this and I'll start creating a list and I'll just go through these. I want us to be talking about these inside the, the group. You know, you guys know I like these 2 million, you know, anything with low supply. And then we look at it, you know, 30 days is up 300%, you know, 14 days, you know, and I start getting in these trades. And, you know, for me, it is the trend, the momentum, not saying, uh, you know, I'll investigate this more and we dig into it to see, you know, how the momentum, I see how many people like it. The fold, you know, is, is good. And we're getting it at a, you know, we're getting it at a price. It's already, it, it came from, but if it's 300% up, that means it came from about $20 or yeah, about maybe 15, 16 bucks in the last month. Now I'm starting to look at these, right? And I'm starting to get into them. Uh, and I'm looking at how many the supply it is, SV, SSV. You know, I'm strictly off momentum and I'll figure out if it's good or not. And these are things that we can bring. You bring it to my attention. You're going to make some money because, you know, I start getting into things that are trending. And this is, uh, you know, I don't like something to go straight up like this, but the circulating supply, the trading volume is all up, the low supply, and you'll see that, you know, 10 months ago, it was at 28. So everything that we're looking at right now, you know, has the potential to go up at least 100% or more, right? Uh, newest crypto coin was a platform. Uh, you know, it's, it probably got down to like 6 cent. Now it's back up to 13 um, on this Muse dial. Let me see this one. Circulating supply is low. And I'll go through each one of these. Total supply, trading volume is high. 
is up 23% in the last 24 hours. Uh, you know, I don't like I don't like when it goes straight up, so I'll probably put it on the watch list. Muse has rebranded. This is this is I'll spend time, I'll spend like an hour just, just going through and going through these. Uh, oops. Market cap. Kajura. All right. Total supply is 122 million circulating supply. This one might look good because of the amount of volume that it has. It is up 300%. So you guys know, you know, I get excited when it goes from 84 to a dollar 80. And so we're talking about these inside the chat. You know, when we started looking at these, it's up 12% today. Um, you know, and it's high with that four, you know, a couple of a couple of months ago. I started getting into coins, you know, especially when they low, even a hundred. You know, so maybe this cost me, you know, um, you know, three, four, five hundred bucks. But you know, if it breaks out, you know, I'm starting to speculate. And I just started to see the volume. I'm catching these early, right? And now they go on the radar. And this is how I turn, you know, a low, a low amount into a large. So I haven't posted no, you know, five hundred dollars to four or five thousand lately, but I plan to, right? And I plan to get back into these type of trades, where you know all I'm doing is is, is searching and seeing what hit the radar, and you know seeing what's moving ten percent on on a day. You see how it's trending 300%. Some of these are going to be up a thousand percent, you know, in the next 60 to 90 days. We are still coming off lows. A lot of times, you know, you know, we don't, we don't think, you know, they're going to move that much. These small market caps are not going to move, but just go up to 1 million to 10 million. Uh, what's up 10%? You know, now they start, they start coming on the radar. Right. And, you know, I look at, you know, the billions. So I want to get the, the millions. And that is the type of trade. So let me just remind you guys of what we were doing last year, <laughs> right? Around this time. If we look at, let's just pull one up on a blank chart. All right. It's worth our time. You know, and this, I kind of wait until the season is right. What is this? All sources, crypto. What the hell is going on here? This is all into the block. I'm trying to see if they have uh Why is that? Why is it coming like that? Let me just pull it up here. You got to see, I mean, last year, if I go, you know, for one year, it started up, you know, I, I think I got this at 90, 90, 90 cent. I bought a thousand uh, September 19th. I actually, I bought it. I actually bought it around September 19th or 20th. And you guys see it ran up to 800, right? That was a 300,000 move off of a thousand dollars, but now cash out at 200. Right, I think I cashed out when it was at 600. So, you know, this is a time when we start getting these parabolic moves around August, September. And I plan to do the same thing this year. So I'm trying to get the eyeballs on the market because when we when we get in and we start sharing, you know, I can't cover the whole market by myself. That's, that's part of the mastermind. But if you're screening the market and you're using some of these similar screeners, you know, you will find them and, and collectively, you know, multiple people will win. It wasn't just me. I think, you know, the in, entire Binance team got into a lot of these plays, but they just cashed out early. I let it ride and it kept riding and kept going up. So, you know, it's worth our, our, our two or three months. A lot of these are, are low right now. Um, you know, some of these aren't going to go up as much. But if we catch them early when they still have a small market cap. You know, this clear pool, this fear, this kill, C chain, um, IOI. Let's take a look at it real quick. 
I just want to, sh- you know, whether you look at not, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving you guys the same thing that I look at, and you know, this is probably not, but say, say you buy this and it drops fourteen percent, you're down fourteen percent, you get out of it. Uh, if it drops twenty twenty percent, but there's no telling how far it can go up. All right, and and a lot of times in the fourth quarter, a lot of these projects they start having a big announcements or or they trying to release. This year, because investors are giving them money in the beginning of the year, they create these projects. So whatever news they have, they start coming out in the fourth quarter, right? Which is October, November, December. If they come out with news and it has momentum, but you bought it in September and August and September when it, when the market is crashing, everybody else is you know getting out the market. You know we are picking these up, and then I'm spending a thousand or five hundred, and you know you you guys see Eternal Mines. I only had to spend a thousand dollars. To turn it into, you know, uh, two hundred thousand, and it was just a game that came out and it was rewarding guys, and they had a low supply, right? And and that gave me the move off of one play, and it was it was plenty of these, right? This is not moving, so don't don't think this one's gonna go up again. This one's probably dead, but there's a new coin that's coming out. We see them when they were created. They released some news in the fourth quarter. And it has a low circulating supply. It definitely has an opportunity to go from, you know, a dollar to, um, you know, up a lot. Uh, it was another one I did last year. I think it was, uh, I think it was, uh, what was it? Unit. It was an NFT one that was a platform. I made something crazy off that one too. I can't even remember what it was. It was, Gotta go back to my journal. <laughs> but it was uh Nick, you remember that platform? It was it was one that it was a platform last year that was uh, an NFT platform, and it went from like 20 cent to like $25. Uh, NFTX. Yeah, it wasn't exactly. it wasn't NFTX, but it was in that category. Right, yeah. Uh, forgot which one it was. If you remember. Um you know, NFTX last year around this time, to look at it, I think NFT went up to like 200, but it, when it came out, uh, it wasn't that high. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it was a, it was a um, NFT platform, though, that came out, and in, in, in we find them around September, October, or August and September. So I'm just giving you guys kind of the history. NFTB? I think it was... Uh, It had a U in it. Okay. Oh no, I'll go back. I'll, I'll go through my screenshots. Um, but yeah, it definitely it definitely moved. Let's see. Okay. All right. So hey, I just want to give you that on the uh, screeners, Coin Gecko, Bit Screener. You know, this is a time where we start catching these plays on the screeners. Um, and, of course, I'm going to call them out, the ones I get into. Uh, but, you know, the more collaboration, the better. I'm just giving you guys a heads up. Mm-hmm. That is that's kind of the time. That's where I spend my time at a lot of times. And if you got an Adam play, we said on the call, it was going to move up. It's moving up. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Sergio, is there an amount they need to trade above in order to place a stop? Now, on some of these low circulating supplies, if I get in early and they start moving, a lot of times I just put a stop a little bit above where I bought, and I'll let it run for a month or two months, three months, because we're going into the fourth quarter. You know, if you get stopped out, but a lot of these are on decentralized platforms. So, you know, we don't have the luxury to put stops on some of these coins that are – um, decentralized, and so a lot of times I'll just put alert, or I'll put them in a watch list, and I'll keep watching them if I get into the trade. So, gotcha. right, so a lot of these, uh, you know, th- this is the benefit that a lot of people don't have their eyes on it because they're only looking at things on a centralized platform. So if you look and see where this is being sold, Clearpool, right, it's on Gate, KuCoin is in, it's on some of these off-brand platforms, but it still has a lot of volume. Right. And so it's not on Coinbase. It's not, you know, the, the the regular people, they're not on, they're not 
you know, the people that's using the centralized platforms, they're not really looking at quick swap and pancake swap, the things that Uniswap, where we were, you know, we're getting advanced information inside the mastermind and we got to, we have an advantage over the rest of the markets. And the reason why we want to teach everybody in here, because there's no way I can track all, all 12 of these different decentralized platforms. I'm normally on Uniswap or PancakeSwap. I don't even trade on KuCoin or Gate. So, you know, QuickSwap, I just buy and sell on there. But, I, you know, really, if I'm going to look at the coins, most of us are on PancakeSwap or Uniswap. So, you know, there's gems that are that are being planted right now. And then they're going to announce they're going to get on the main exchange. And we're already there. So one of the ones that I got into that's down right now, um, big move because I'm in the move to earn. I'm, I'm exercising every day. Uh, I bought this at eight. It's down to five. It's, it's almost down 50%, right? And it's down 16% in a day. Um, three months ago, it was at one cent. Today is at five. So whoever got it early, uh, the high was 10. And it has a low circulating supply. So I'm still not out. But maybe, you know, they, they were just listed on Coinbase. And maybe they're going to be listed, you know, and they're going to have fourth quarter news. Uh, so right now you see it's only on pancake swap, but you know, in the fourth quarter, you know, the, the site is down or they had a security thing, you know, it may open up. And so I'll be tracking it for news, but I'm already in early and it didn't, it didn't cost me a lot, but a lot of times if, if it gets momentum, 50 million in coins, it isn't a lot. So, you know, if this is, goes up to a dollar. I'd be a pretty happy guy. I mean, I'm not trying to hope. I'm not selling the hopium model. I'm selling the uh, the trading model that you know it has a it has a platform has a uh, is on Google Play is on Apple Store. You know now it just needs adoption and and based on the marketing team, the white paper, uh, their roadmap, right? So I look at the roadmap and see what happens on the fourth quarter. You know they're gonna have a DAO. That means that people will be able to buy into the DAO. We're already in the uh, coin, right? Uh, su support on Solana Network. All these things, all their little, you know, it's a little roadmap. It's not that detailed. So it's not probably the best project. But at the end of the day, it does have uh, about a million dollars invested in it so far in the community treasury. So the yeah, middle stops uh, and in early, you know, it normally pays off for me. Uh, it paid off for me the last five years doing the same strategy. So <laughs> until it stops, I'm going to keep running with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. On that note, uh, man, I'm going to give you guys your night back. I don't know if you have any anything else, Northfleet, or anybody else has anything they want to add, uh, anything they want to, you know, add into the mastermind. If not, Man, give me a night back. Appreciate you guys hopping on the call. And uh, I anticipate us making a lot of money in the fourth quarter. But, uh, you know, we still are doing okay right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good session, man. Thank you for that. Very informative. All right, man. Good. Good looking out. We, we want everybody to be independent and be able to make money on their own. But we're going to do it together. Thanks. That is the purpose of this call. Masterminds, baby. <laughs> all right <laughs> all right guys i'll all talk right, to you guys night. later signing off have a good night all right good, all right, night, good guys. night guys